Well, Pat, first of all, I do want to say thank you. It's so surreal. Uh, you you came into Dayton and did our morning show when you had a solo album. It's probably been 12 yeah. years ago, maybe? I mean, 13 or 14 years. That was 2007, I think, yeah. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah, Dave Watson brought you in and you did the, you hung out. Wow, Dave whole, Watson. Yeah, hung out and did Dave. the whole morning show, man. It was so fun and yeah. we've seen you so many different times. And then- Is uh, Dave still doing it? He is. Wow. I love that. I, yeah, me too, man. He's, I mean, seriously, I've been working with that guy since the late eighties when I first yeah. got into radio. So he, he uh, he's a cool awesome. guy, man. I like him a lot. He's a cool guy. I'll never forget when he called and said, Hey, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to bring Pat in and, you know, talk about his new album and hang out on the morning show for a while. I was like, uh, okay, Pat Monahan. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was and, fun. And you hung out for like two hours. It wasn't just like you popped in and yeah, shot cool. out. So, I have always appreciated that. And then to come full circle, seriously, with this thing that happened with, uh, with John Waite, with my band over the summer, we recorded yeah. in Cincinnati, he recorded in LA and put it together. And then when that's so they, cool that you did that with John, I'm a big fan of his. Oh, <clears throat> dude, he's the nicest guy, uh, much like yeah. yourself, just super nice. And we couldn't believe he said, we opened my band opened for him like eight years ago and kind of became friends and, he said, yeah, let's do it. I couldn't believe it. And to hear oh, you so introduce cool. it a couple times on train tracks has just been, just blew my mind, man. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad that, I'm glad that it's you that, that uh, is getting the benefits of that because you're a great guy too, just like John. Oh, well, thank you, man. Well, I, I sincerely appreciate that. And I'm so happy you're coming around. Uh, you're going to be actually about 10 minutes from my house. So I'm coming to see you uh, on August 26th at the Rose Music Center. And I just, I first of all want to ask, what is it like to get back out there? It's so good. Yeah. I mean, it's been, uh, <clears throat> it's been so long and it feels like a part of us has been missing. And then, uh, you know, I I'm watching other bands cancel shows and change the rules and, <clears throat> you know, and we're just trying not to mess any of this up because we need live music so badly, not just us, but, people in the audience, like you realize after about 20 seconds that it's like a big human part of us is missing and live music is filling those gaps and it's big time stuff. Yeah. And I think that's something that just as from the radio side of it, um, you know, um, obviously my band, we missed playing shows last summer too, but from the radio side of it, just connecting with people every day and, how many people just kind of got back to the radio even through this whole thing? Because they're like, you know, radio yeah. is my friend or a familiar voice, or I just need that music in my life. Like you said, and man, yeah. I'm telling you what, a couple of weeks ago, I saw sticks and night ranger. It was my first show back. Oh, cool. And people were just, I mean, you could tell they were just out of the stratosphere experiencing a live show. And I would have to, have you guys done many so far? Uh, we've done about a, week, a week's worth of shows. Okay. And it's just, every one of them is just so, uh, I mean, I, I hate to keep using the word amazing, but it's a great experience because it's bigger and better than ever as far as people's enthusiasm and that connection. Like you really see how human we all are and how much it matters. Yeah. I did feel kind of like you said, I, I almost sensed a, I think we all got a real, a real wake up call on appreciating yeah. not just music in general. Appreciating music, everything. Music, everything. Right. Appre right. I never knew how much I appreciated toilet paper. <laughs> 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 didn't even know that was going to be a thing. Did <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, but now I just, now I don't know how to buy uh, just a little bit of toilet paper anymore. <laughs> I have to buy all of it. Of course. <laughs> you have to usually crowd in front of someone and push them out of I mean, the way to do it. It's a, it's a weird thing you find out about humans, right? Like, yeah. like all of a sudden, hey, we're, there's a little bit of stress. We, we should all stress out. Okay, what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to go buy all the toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, that, what a strange concept, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense because that <laughs> you would think that the usage isn't really going to change. But, I, you know. Yeah. That was, that was a bit perplexing. <laughs> yeah, it was. Hey, what's the biggest song on your station right now? Is it Heat Wave? Uh, it, is, uh, it is probably The weekend. Save Your Tears. Oh, cool. I like that song a lot. Yeah, it's a cool song. 
Um, and you know what? We played your vac- we played your vacation, the Dirty Heads track. We played uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago too. T- tell me what's happening with that. Yeah, it's in the top forty now. It's, I'm I'm psyched for those guys. You know, I've been a big fan of theirs for a long time, and that song just kind of went crazy on TikTok and. They asked if I would be a part of it, and I was like, "Yeah, man, it's already a hit. So whatever you want, you know." So we do a we do a piece of it in our set, and it goes over great. Yeah, I would have to imagine now. Train is is celebrating. I mean, a couple really strong decades. The thing I love is that is that I remember at the, in the very late '90s with you know Meet Virginia and Drops of Jupiter and some of those early tracks. I, I I just remember thinking, man, I love this band, and I feel like I've connected with you along the way through the whole twenty plus years. And and I would imagine you've seen your fans kind of obviously that you got those early fans, that early core, and then all these people that have come along for the ride afterwards because you've managed to be one of the few bands that is has you know most bands don't get out of the first album, right? If they even get a first album. Um, and then you guys just kept putting out these incredibly powerful songs like Calling All Angels and, and then fun songs like Hey Soul Sister and 50 Ways. And, and um, I mean, you've just you've managed to just be like, nope, we're here. We're relevant. It doesn't matter if it's 1999 or 2009 or 2019. And I think that's it's, it's timeless, man. And, and not many bands get to do that. Well, thank you. I, th- you know, I, I was early aware uh, or aware early that we were not going to be the biggest band in the world, but if I could outlive all of them, that would be, that would be second best. And, uh, and that was, that's been the goal. Well, you still look like you did in 1999. So I think you got that. Part no, that's, too. that's, that's a lie, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Everybody asks like, Hey, drops of Jupiter just turned 20 years old. Does it feel like 20 years? So I'm like, well, I still feel like I'm 25, but then the mirror tells me you ain't Jack. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> don't you think that playing live does help you feel like you're still 25? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, this is a tr- very true statement. I feel like I stopped aging a week ago, like not, no lie. Like we just got back on the road a week ago and I feel like time, I feel like I'm just getting younger because that's what music does for me. Like, it's just a, such a, very big, deep part of uh, all of us. And it just, it's so, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, telling people to go see live music uh, can be, uh, I don't, I don't want to do that because I don't want to make people feel like uh, I'm putting them in any kind of jeopardy. But uh, when we leave these towns, there is no spike in COVID in any of these towns. Like they're very responsible people coming to these concerts and, they're they're really very needed like we all need it <clears throat> people in the audience need to <clears throat> need it we need it on stage it's a human like connection that we uh we all need yeah i, I agree with you and um i really feel like when things really got bad by the by the fall and through the winter you know the, the winter's depressing anyway but i feel like anyway yeah yeah, I feel like the whole country kind of hit this emotional low. Yeah. You know, you're not going to do the, you're not going to your sporting events. You're not going to your concerts. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's winter time. And man, I, I feel like, you know, we were ready to just hit the ground running this summer. And I'm, I'm yeah. so glad to see you guys back out there. Um, so again, the show is, is Thursday, the 26th, seven o'clock at the Rose Music Center, which is a fairly new facility, by the way. You're going to love it. It's a great place. Um, and I don't, yeah, I don't believe you've been there in the last couple of years. Like you've been different places around Dayton, but I think this will be a yeah. first for you there. So what, uh, what can people expect with this, with this broad, you know, library of, of train hits and what's the, what's the biggest city close to Dayton? Is it Cincinnati or is it Cleveland? It's actually Columbus. Columbus. So, right. Yeah. That's exact. Yeah. So Columbus is where OAR is from yeah. the band. Yeah. They all went to Ohio state. Yes. And we toured with them a few years ago and, and stayed really close. They got me into boxing. So, oh, yeah? So my workout is in the back of a truck with a heavy bag and, and stuff because of oh, those nice. guys. But uh, Really? Uh, yeah, putting a set list together every night, is it's fun. We're doing more, more songs from the Drops of Jupiter album since it is a 20-year anniversary. 
And even though we have a bunch of new songs because we'll have a new record in the fall, we're not playing any of them because I've been to concerts where they play new music and I'm like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> uh, so we'll wait until people are familiar with them. And then we, uh, we have a Christmas album that we did a while back called Christmas in Tahoe that we just keep adding songs to as time goes on. Instead of making new Christmas albums, we just keep adding it because it's all digital anyway. Right. And we're going to shoot uh, the Christmas in Tahoe movie uh, in about a month. Oh. And then it'll play on Hallmark this Christmas season. Really? Yeah, I'm psyched. So is that is the whole band in the in the movie? What? How's that? How's that I'm not sure. I mean, I have a pretty significant part, not as a, a, a musician, but I'm not sure if the other guys will be in it like peripherally you know uh, or or if it's just you know with the way people are shooting movies right now to keep it going it, it's very intense and all testing all the time so it might not work out that way right well that's exciting and I, every year we play shake up christmas uh every year that's such a fun song that's been around for a oh, while thanks yeah it's been around a while we're Eric, your uh, your guy, my guy. He's he's trying to make it uh, annoying to uh, to the world, so that uh, it's like every other Christmas song, like not this again. <laughs> well, the thing I love I love about that song is that it's you know where you have your you have your traditional you know classic Christmas song. I like that one because it definitely sounds contemporary, which you don't. A, a lot of the new contemporary releases, Christmas songs don't necessarily <laughs> end up getting more than a, a play or two. And it kind of is like, okay, right. that was fun. And it goes away. Uh, but right. that one does, res, you know, res, have a resurgence every year. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I love it too. Eric's yeah. doing a good job with it. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, I saw you a couple years ago, I guess maybe it's, maybe it's been three years ago on the Hall and Oates tour, bro. That was oh. one of the best combos because, you know, of course, Hall and Oates are, are legendary and, you know, have, five decades of, of hits, but seeing you guys come out and play basically your greatest hits and, and a few others, you know, to play this killer opener set and then have, you know, hollow notes come out and play all their hits and then have you come out and sing with Daryl. I mean, man, it was, it was, and I saw live from Daryl's house. So I knew a long time ago that, that you guys had this connection and he has this respect for you and you have this respect for him. It was so cool to see that, you know, on that tour. Yeah, it was really fun for us too. Uh, I, you know, Holland Oats has been a huge part of my music history, and um, yeah, that was a it was a really fun tour for us as well. Yeah, thank you for the compliment. Yeah, and the song uh, "Philly Forget Me Not" that was uh, that, that's on my playlist, man. That's uh, that that's a sounded like a really cool, just something in the moment type of uh, song for you guys. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Western Pennsylvania and those guys are both Philadelphia guys. So Philly forget me not seem like the right, uh, the right vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before we let you go here, Pat, what, uh, what can we expect from the new train album? I know you said you're not going to be playing a lot of stuff necessarily at the show live, but we have, you know, to, to look forward this fall. Uh, we can play all of it live if you want. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> and then everybody's sitting there like, oh, um, it's I think it's going to be a really good record. It's uh, I, I, these young. I'm always influenced by young people. And I, I listen to a lot of hip hop, but people don't want train to make a hip hop record. But I've been listening to these uh, sounding songs that are from young kids today. And uh, and that has played a big influential role in the new train record. It's it's much more like Motowny and, and soulful, mm. uh, and so I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a lot of fun for people. And then it'll uh, transcend into a live setting, uh, I think, really well for next summer. And uh, when we have the the new album out, when people are more familiar with it. We'll play those songs. Yeah, we'll look forward to that, man. That's for sure. Uh, we'll just keep we'll, we'll just keep uh, I'll play your music you play my music <laughs> <laughs> keep scratching each other's back all right yeah. so I guess we just got to figure out when if it, so we've done stranger featuring Springfield and stranger featuring John Waite so anytime you want to do stranger featuring Pat Monahan, I'm in cool all right I'm in too sounds right. fun <laughs> thank you so much right. for taking the time great to see your face and uh, look forward you to too. seeing Thanks. you next week at, uh, at Rose Music Center man 
Great. I'll see you next week. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Pat.